everyone. Thanks again for joining us today on another episode of Gear Talk, where you get to know some of the great gear we have in the studio at Women's Audio Mission. I'm your host today, Laura Dean, a staff engineer here at the studio. Um, so let's go ahead and cut over to a session I have pulled up so you can get to know another one of our awesome plugins. Today we're going to look at the basic functions of the incredible Isotope RX2 Denoiser plugin that comes in the RX toolkit of powerful denoising plugins. This plugin is the first one I go to because it can learn the shape of any regular bed of noise and remove it, no matter how many different sources of noise are contributing. So let's go over to our session which has a noisy guitar track that we want to clean up a little. Let's open up the plugin. Uh, here it is under noise reduction. I am choosing this plugin because the noise we want to remove not only has amp buzz, but noise from a Hammond Leslie cabinet and tape hiss as well. Let's take a listen to the noise on this track. <laughs> It's not horrible, but it would be nice to clean up a little. You can see the noise here before the guitar comes in. It's great that we have this clean sample of noise because the next step is to have the plugin learn what the noise is in order to differentiate it from the sound we want to hear. So the first thing we want to do is go down to the bottom of the plugin here and click learn. Then we want to select the part of the audio that's just noise, not any sound that we actually want and then hit play. You can see the plugin taking an average of this sample that it can now use in the noise reduction process. Now let's play back the audio with the default setting of minus 12 dB of reduction and see what happens. Way better already. Here's an A-B of the unprocessed versus processed. After you've captured a sample of the noise, you can play around with the amount and smoothing of noise reduction until it sounds just right. Notice how extreme you can get with very little artifact. I think the default sounds about right in this case. We don't want to lose too much top end and detail of the guitar, and I think a little air sounds natural on an exposed part like this. Most of the time, the simple controls do the trick for me, but if you need to get into the more advanced settings, there are some great options that even go beyond noise reduction and can be used independently to shift the balance between the tonal part of the sound and the broadband noise. Check out their website for more info on this plugin and other great ones like the Ozone 5 mastering system, which I also love, or other cool production type plugins like the Stutter Edit. Thanks for joining me today in the studio. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I will see you again next time here on Gear Talk. <laughs>